that you always hear when we come around the table of our Lord. The original account of the Last Supper we find in 1 Corinthians 11. Just think very slowly and reverently hear these words. 1 Corinthians 11, verse 23. For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. In Shakespeare's Hamlet, Ophelia gives Larity some herbs and flowers. It says, here's some rosemary. It's for remembrance. Pray, love, remember. Those three words may be described as best as any three words there are, the heart of the Christian faith. Pray, love, and in the holiest sense of the word, remember. Most of our remembering is done by accident almost. We take a bite of peach cobbler and suddenly we're in our grandmother's kitchen. We drive down the street and we see a house that looks like the house we grew up in and we can almost see your mother planting irises. We go in the desk drawer for a pair of scissors and we see an old vacation photo of the family at the beach. The children, were they ever that small? You're in the photo also. Were you ever that small? <laughs> we remember, but we remember haphazardly and not nearly enough. We don't remember on purpose because most of the time we're in such a hurry that we don't have time to keep up with what's going on in the moment, much less walk down some memory lane. And so usually our chances of remembering, they slip away which can be really tragic. And so we come to this holy place this morning to remember. The Hebrews always, people always understood remembering as one of the highest acts of worship. Even to this day, if you go into a Jewish home and they are asked the meaning of Passover, what do they say? They say, when we were in Egypt, bringing the past 
into the present, even if they've never been outside of Brooklyn. To remember something in Hebrew fashion is not just to entertain some little pale idea. Remembering brings what was back there suddenly into our present again. And so the Bible is always inviting us to just put a, the brakes on this breathless pace of life that is ours and just pause for a moment and remember. Remember in Genesis, God said, whenever you see a rainbow, remember God's love and commitment to you. In Exodus, Moses is told to instruct the people to remember the day that they came out of Egypt. And now, three years after being with his best friends, Jesus gathers them around the table as he does us this morning. And he breaks the bread and he pours the wine. And he says this, this will help you remember. God invites us to remember as certainly as God invites us to pray. In fact, it may be that the best praying we ever do is when we remember. Legend has it that when Zacchaeus, that wee little man, after having that encounter with Jesus, that every now and then he would just disappear out the back door of his office. He put the cell phone in the desk drawer and tell his assistant, I don't want to be disturbed. And out the back door he would go. Finally, nobody knew where he was, and finally somebody's curiosity got the best of them, and they followed him. They watched him as he walked that dusty road down to Jericho, and as he climbed that sycamore tree, and the friend looks up and says, what are you doing up there? And Zacchaeus simply says, I just need to remember. When Elie Wiesel was asked to summarize all of Scripture, he said it's one word. Remember, we know the old song, nobody knows the trouble I've seen. And that's true for many of us. We've seen some sadness, some of us, that's hard to think about. But it's also necessary to think about. Some events that seem so hard that we don't even want to go back there. But yet somehow, and through the years in remembering it, there becomes some healing as well. We need to remember the friends that we have lost along the way. We need to remember the emptiness we felt when someone died too soon. Sometimes it's only in remembering the hard times that we suddenly become aware of how God was with us all the time. And so we don't need to only remember the hard times. We need also just as much to remember the good times. When we were given gifts beyond anything that we deserved. We were just better people because certain others were in our life. We just knew ourselves to be better than we really knew to be hardly. We would find ourselves slipping along some right road for all the wrong reasons. You know, in the middle of an argument with your spouse, it doesn't hurt to go back and pull out the wedding album and remember how cute you looked and how good it felt. When your child is driving you crazy, whatever age your child may be, it's maybe good to go down to the bottom drawer and pull out that old cardboard box with the glittery artistic creations and the soccer certificates. It's not only claiming our past with gratitude, but it's also being nice to ourselves to remember some things with forgiveness to ourselves as well. Because our memories, our memories are the stories of God that was always with us. The places, the times, the events that once were present now invite us to see that God is still with us even now. And so we come to church this morning to remember. We listen to the stories of Scripture because they are our stories. We pray we, to remember God's amazing love. We sing to remember how great God can be. And now we are invited 
Just as Jesus invited those unlikely, unsuspecting ones that night, so he has invited us to come to his table and to remember more than anything else what he did for us, who he is for us. Take, eat this bread, he said, in remembrance. Take this cup in remembrance. Just for a moment, can you remember? Do you remember some moment when it seems so real that you knew it to be true? And let that be what feeds you and what meets your thirst even now. I never get over the fact that it was the very night in which he was betrayed. Most of us good people, we wouldn't betray him. We would never think of doing that, would we? We're here at church. We've come to his table. But they were ready to just leave him to die. And so they did. And he knew that they would. But still, his love was such. And we remember the story, don't we? Well, guess what? This is your story. He broke the bread and said, this is my body which is broken for you Sunday morning, 2016. Wherever you are and however you are, remember this is for you. Oh God, we've asked your blessings. We do hunger and we do forget. May we be blessed by our memories of something greater than ourselves that is just as real today as it was we remember that story so long ago. For your name we pray. Amen. So remember the first time you came to Wake Forest Baptist, what it felt like to walk into this room. Remember who invited you, the lucky break that got you here. Remember when you started sitting in the same pew every Sunday. Remember coming to the front of this sanctuary and telling everyone that you wanted to be a part of this family. Remember when you were baptized, when someone you loved was baptized. Remember visiting several Sunday school classes and how they welcome you like a long lost sister and brother. Remember what this church feels like at Advent, the joy of Christmas music. Remember the solemn reverence of Ash Wednesday and Monday Thursday, the excitement of Easter morning. Remember Vacation Bible School, how much fun it felt when it started, how wonderful it feels when it's over. Remember going to Haiti, to Uganda, to the Bahamas, to New York City, to New Orleans, to Columbia, all over the world on behalf of this church and God. Remember the ministers and how much they loved this church. Remember how when you visited your aunt and uncle, and got, went to her church, you missed Wake Forest Baptist. Remember when you were sick and how warm it felt to know that people were praying for you. Remember getting your hands dirty in the garden or mustard stains on your hands or muscles bulging from the interfaith food shuttle. Remember when the Stevensons left 16 acres to this church and the seminary left 1.8 acres to this church. Remember the ones who came and left. Remember the funerals, the weddings, the baby dedications. Remember a moment in worship when the grace of God was so real, it had to be true. More than anything, remember it all. Because when we remember this church, we will be grateful. The God of the past, present, and future is at work in this congregation. 
And what we most need to remember is the presence of Christ, the presence of love, the presence of God. God has been pulling this church along since 1835. And most of the time we don't even notice that we are never, ever alone. A goodness bigger than we are has pulled us this far, has made this church holy and wonderful. God is the one who brings us here. God makes this place and this people home and family. God is where will we pray, love, and remember. God becomes most real. Very simply and very powerfully, in worship, we take the bread and remember what he said to us. Take, eat, in remembrance of the one who is so crazy about you, he'd rather die than live without you. Thanks be to God. In the same way he said, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Take, eat, and take now a drink in remembrance of him. O oh Christ, we thirst for so much. Bless our memories right now. Boldly put ourselves into the story. May we know it is for each of us that you died and each of us that you now live. And so fill our cup until it runneth over. In your name we pray.
do this in remembrance of me. Since the new covenant in his blood, as often as you drink it, do so in remembrance of him. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> in 1772, Dr. John Fawcett was the pastor of a little Baptist church in Waynesgate, England. At that time, he received the call to be the pastor of a large church in London, and after much prayer, he accepted that call. The day, his last day of the church came, the wagons were packed with his belongings sitting outside the church, and after the church service was over, the people gathered around the wagons to pray over and to express their love for their pastor who has served them so faithfully all those years. His wife, after the such tender and emotional love outpoured, said, John, I just can't bear this. He said, I can't either. Unload the wagons. So they decided to stay. And that next week, John Fawcett sat, sat down, penned the words to him, thinking about the love that he had known as a pastor of that church. He wrote the words to bless be the tie that binds our hearts in Christian love, which we always sing following the Lord's Supper. Today we're going to sing all the verses as we remember God's love and the gift of this church and all that each of us are to each other. The hymn is hymn number 267. If there are any this morning who wish to give their life to Christ or unite with this church with another church family or some renewed commitment, I'll be at the front to receive you. But let us remember as we sing. Let us sing to the glory of God, hymn number 267. Let us sing. You'll be seated for just a moment. First, let me say a word of welcome to guests. We're glad that you have been family for us around the table, the family table of our Lord today. We hope that you have been blessed as we have been blessed by your company. 
we have a guest reception room over to the side. We'd love for you to stop by. Mike Dishman from our outreach team would be happy to share any information with you or just get to know you better. We hope you'll stop by. Let me remind you again uh, that as is our custom, whenever we gather around the table of our Lord, we give you the opportunity to give a love offering as you leave today to help ChurchNet, which is a ministry to those in financial need here in our community. Again, we have an incredible new lineup of options on Wednesday night. Hope you'll come out and be a part of that. So Bill and Rita, you'll join me. So it's a celebration to welcome Bill and Rita Smith into our fellowship, into our family, and call you family now officially. They come upon transfer of membership, come with a deep commitment to Jesus Christ and to the church. I enjoyed visiting with them just this week. So it's a real treat. So if you will let them know a visible, tangible side of your welcome and delight that they have come to be a part of our family, let me be known by an uplifted hand, our side of welcome and celebration. And I hope you'll come up and welcome Bill and Rita following the benediction. It's so good to be family together. We look forward to sharing the journey of life together. Thank you. So let us now bow for the benediction. And then we will sing, we are one in the bond of love. The words are in your bulletin for our response. So let us pray. Christ before you, Christ behind you, Christ within you. Grace upon grace, mercy upon mercy, love all love. Jesus Christ, our Lord, thanks be to God.